Everyone needs water, but many American University students don't like drinking DC's water straight from the tap. We feel like nasty when I drink it. Yep.、Yeah. Every once in a while, it smells like chlorine, and it tastes like chlorine. It tastes kind of like a metallicy kind of a taste. It needs to be filtered. It has a lot of like different chemicals in it, and it's probably not healthy. Is that true? Is DC water really unhealthy? From 2000 to 2004. DC water was found to have excessive levels of lead, which led to investigations by the Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Lead is especially unhealthy for pregnant women and small children. It can cause brain and kidney damage and has been linked to lowered IQs in children. The Washington Post has reported that 42,000 DC kids aged four to nine may be permanently damaged by the high levels of lead that were in drinking water at that time. My name is William Hersey. I'm chemist in residence at the moment here at American University. My main concern with with DC tap water has to do with my background at EPA and my involvement in the issues around putting fluoride in drinking water and some of the、um, problems that are associated with that. The recent lead in DC drinking water, for instance, may very well be related to the、uh, use of the. Particular chemical that they put fluoride in the drinking water here with, and this compound is responsible for leaching lead out of、uh, water delivery system fittings. Since the EPA investigations, the District of Columbia Sewage and Water Authority, or WASA, has taken steps to reduce the amount of lead in DC's tap water. According to WASA's website, lead in drinking water doesn't come from the water's source. But from lead service pipes connected to private homes. To keep lead from getting into the drinking water, the Washington Aqueduct has added the chemical orthophosphate to prevent lead pipes from dissolving. To avoid drinking lead, WASA recommends drinking filtered tap water, replacing lead pipes with copper ones, and never running your faucet on hot, which can lead lead pipes to dissolve more easily. WASA tells people living in DC to run their faucet on cold for two minutes before using it in cooking if the faucet hasn't been used in the past several hours. Lead and other metals can dissolve in water if they sit in pipe for even just a few hours. But lead isn't the end of the story. Another issue is the、uh, presence of pharmaceuticals and so forth that get into、uh, the sewage systems, and are very difficult to remove by the、um, common type of、uh, water treatment. Recent findings of intersex fish in the Potomac River, DC's water source, have environmentalists on edge. These are male fish that are carrying female eggs in their testes. Scientists believe these intersex fish have been affected by estrogen and other pollutants in the water, which may come from birth control pills and other pharmaceutical drugs, fertilizers, and pesticides getting into the sewage system. They found that the highest concentrations of intersex fish are near farms and congested cities. Seventy-five percent of male smallmouth bass were intersex in the most populated farm sites on the Potomac Basin. But what does this mean for people? Scientists still don't know if the hormones affecting the fish can also affect humans. The short answer is that they won't affect humans as much because we have bigger bodies and because we don't live in the water. But nobody knows for sure. Scientists don't even know what exactly is causing intersex fish or the best way to detect pharmaceutical drugs in the water, let alone what effects they could have on humans. Currently, there are no federal regulations limiting drug levels in wastewater or drinking water. WASA also doesn't treat its water for estrogen or pharmaceuticals because it's not cost-effective, and because as of yet there have been no proven side effects on humans. Many students have ways to avoid tap water. I just buy bottled water. Well, I have a Brita in my room, so I usually filter it. We have a Brita filter in my room. Brita, and then I also have one of the things that boils water really quickly, so I use that for tea. But some of these things have their own side effects, and might not even remove the chemicals in drinking water. Let's start with bottled water. Chris O'Brien, AU's director of sustainability, says it's a bad choice. He says bottled water costs more and could actually be less healthy than tap water. This is because while tap water is regulated by the EPA, bottled water is not. Bottled water is reported voluntarily, and there's no proof that it's true. And even when they do report it, they just skip a whole bunch of things. And some of the things that they do report are actually higher contamination levels than public water. So.
about estrogen, the question is not, does tap water have it, and should I then drink bottled water, but rather, is there any water that doesn't have it, because we don't know what's in bottled water. O'Brien says water bottles are also bad for the environment, and advocates drinking tap water instead. For 10,000 years, humans have been living in civilization. All of that time, we've been trying to perfect the delivery of clean, safe, low-cost public drinking water for all. In America, we've achieved that, and now we're undermining it with bottled water. AU President Neil Kerwin has said that reducing water bottles on campus is important in AU's goals to be environmentally friendly. One student is even trying to take matters into his own hands. Alex Labont, an international studies student at AU, has made a petition called Kick Water Bottles Off Campus. My end of it was to establish and start a campaign to have the sale of water bottles eliminated from campus in order to promote the use of reusable water bottles and you know, promote consumer hands-on approach to combating this corporate control of a basic human right and you know, something that should, in theory, be free. And so I, I started this petition and I circulated it online and I'm, I've done some tabling and I'm going to do more tabling. And I just really want to make people aware how unsustainable and just irrational buying a, a plastic water bottle is. What about filters? While Professor Hersey advocates the use of filters, O'Brien says they're a source of bacteria. Tap water is filtered water. Mm -hmm. Adding an, an extra filter at the end increases contamination. Hersey says bacteria is something worth paying attention to, but notes that DC's filtration still isn't designed to remove the chemicals thought to be causing intersex fish does a fine job on taking out the leaves and twigs and dead squirrels and that sort of thing, but in terms of getting out little molecules of estrogen-type compounds, it's not, not very efficient. What about boiling the water? Well, th that might get rid of any pathogens that are present, but it certainly doesn't remove lead, it doesn't remove fluoride or uh, any of the um, organics that are there. So, since we all need water to live, students have some choices. They can drink tap water and lead and other chemicals with it. They can drink bottled water and probably be exposed to more chemicals while hurting the environment. They can use simple filters and be exposed to bacteria. Or they can use a $130 at home water distiller like Professor Hersey. Take your pick. This is Taylor Sutton reporting from the American University campus.